Mahjong Toryu Mon is the first of four Mahjong games released for the Wonderswan. It was released a week after launch on March 11, 1999, and was developed and published by Sammy. Sammy is probably best known in the West for being the publisher of early Guilty Gear titles, as well as putting out the Atomus Wave arcade board before merging with Sega in 2004. In Japan, however, they are a prolific developer and retailer of pachinko and patchy slot systems. They didn't have any experience in making Mahjong video games prior to this and wouldn't work on Mahjong again until adding online Mahjong to their virtual pachinko parlor at 37town.net in 2007. Luckily for them, they didn't have to do all of the heavy lifting for this one. The game's AI was licensed from a company called Chanoir. Chanoir was notable in the video game Mahjong scene for being a developer of many video game adaptations of Mahjong until the year 2000, but also for licensing out their AI to developers working on their own Mahjong games. They would even develop the second Mahjong title released on the Wonderswan, Nihon Pro Mahjong Renmei Konin Tetsumon, published by Naxatsoft, which we'll discuss on a future episode. The Toryumon branding would ultimately be used for two games Sammy published on the Wonderswan, the second being Shogi Toryumon, released in October of 1999. This would be an adaptation of the Japanese board game Shogi. If Mahjong is Japan's answer to poker, then Shogi is Japan's answer to chess. Traditionally, chronological surveys of game libraries haven't been the greatest when it comes to Mahjong games. Mahjong is one of those no-no words to Western gamers much like Pachinko is, and I think that stigma is unwarranted. Mahjong is a fascinating game with lots of depth, and I hope my enthusiasm for it makes some viewers reconsider their opinion. So before I delve into what makes this particular game unique, I figure I should give you a quick introduction to Richi Mahjong, a Japanese variant on the game which is played in all four Wonderswan Mahjong titles. But first, I need to clear up a Western misconception about Mahjong. Many people in the West think of Mahjong as being a solitaire matching game. This was largely popularized by games such as Activision's Shanghai for the Amiga, Mac, and Apple II in 1986, as well as Microsoft's Taipei, which was included with the Microsoft Entertainment Pack for Windows 3.1 in 1990. While Mahjong Solitaire is a fine game in itself, it has little to do with real Mahjong aside from the use of the same tiles. Fans of Mahjong Solitaire can look forward to episode 12 when we'll discuss Shanghai Pocket, but from here on out all references to Mahjong will refer to the 4-player game and not Mahjong Solitaire. Anyway, the core loop of Mahjong is that each player takes their turn drawing a tile into their hand, and then discarding a tile in hopes of building a legal 14-tile hand. While that in itself isn't particularly exciting, you can call on another player's discarded tile if it can contribute to a meld in your hand, in exchange for giving the opponent some visibility into the hand you're building, and a score multiplier. Melds include a 3 tile straight flush, a 3 of a kind, or a 4 of a kind. You can also call on another player's discard if it's the tile you're missing to complete your hand. A winning hand in traditional Mahjong consists of 4 melds and a pair of matching tiles, but Richi Mahjong requires you to meet certain conditions, called Yaku. Yaku make Mahjong more like poker by restricting winning hands to certain tile patterns, each with their own score value based on how difficult a hand it is to put together. There are many more rules to take into consideration, but they won't really make any sense until you have more familiarity with Mahjong, so we're going to gloss over them for the purpose of this video. Unfortunately for us, Mahjong Toryumon is not a particularly good game to introduce Mahjong to people with because of how it presents the game as it's being played. Modern Mahjong games are more skew-morphic, depicting the game as if it was played around a table at a Mahjong parlor. The presentation style used in Toryumon is more reminiscent of early video Mahjong titles, or the style that sleazy strip Mahjong games never grew out of using. Each player's play space is represented as a row, with their discards on top, their hand on the bottom, and their melds off to the right. The problem comes from how screen real estate is used. You won't see your opponent's hands during 90% of regular gameplay because you aren't meant to see them until the end of the round anyway, so that space is just wasted for most of the game. Since modern Mahjong titles try to recreate the experience of playing at a table, opponent's hands are lined up along the three other edges of the screen with tiles facing outward toward them. The hands are only revealed when they are relevant, and hell, they could probably get away with not showing them at all if they really wanted to. There are so many ways that they could have made the presentation better for a handheld, but I feel they really blew it here. Presentation aside, Toriumon is pretty standard when it comes to the game modes it offers, save for one exception. You're given the usual single game, tournament, and multiplayer modes, but it also offers a handy scoring calculator. If you, like me, don't know the actual scoring rules because you always play Video Mahjong which handles that for you, having a calculator on hand for the rare occasions you play Mahjong in person can be handy. Simply enter a hand in its winning conditions and the game will spit out the score. Since the rules of Mahjong are fairly consistent from one game to another, the deciding factors between Mahjong video games typically come down to presentation, artificial intelligence, and variety of game modes. 
Without wanting to spoil too much of the other three Mahjong Games episodes, this one has the least going for it. If I had to guess, I'd say this was a rush job meant to capitalize on being the first and only Mahjong title available for The Wonder of Swan a week after launch. The next Mahjong game wouldn't come out for another four months, and by all indications it seems to be much, much better. Now obviously, to keep videos like this one to a reasonable length, I can't cover everything, so here are two extra resources if you're interested in learning more. The PlayStation's launch lineup is similar to the Wonder Swans game library in that it also features two Mahjong titles that Shanwa was credited for, and the Retro Pals channel has a great video going in-depth into those and the company's history. If you're interested in learning more about Richi Mahjong and how to play it, Hana Yoriyuta has put up an exhaustive walkthrough of the game's rules that comes in at a whopping three and a half hours, which is incredibly long, but it covers everything you would ever want to know about the game. Also, as you probably noticed, due to audio emulation issues, I couldn't use game audio for this episode, so this episode's background audio was The Divine Comedy by Frums. You can get their latest EP, Meta Continues, on Bandcamp. See you next episode.